Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orisund once again, and we're going to go back to Sealand in Denmark and revisit a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, and it seems to be that here in Sweden, these beers appear in quite big numbers for a little while, then they disappear, then they come back again, they disappear and they come back again. It seems to go in peaks and troughs with this brewery. So we're getting quite a few of their beers at the moment now, and you've seen me review quite a few of their beers recently, actually. But um, yeah, looking forward to this one today. I would say that this brewery are mainly known for their hazy New England IPAs, and it's one of those that we're gonna have a look at today. And this one has some really nice hops in it. So looking forward to it, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. Always nice to review some Danish beers for you here on the channel. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to Grave, which is to the southwest of Copenhagen, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Ale Farm Brewing. So this particular beer is called Saturated. It comes in at 6% ABV, and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. And it's got Mosaic, El Dorado, and Amarillo in it. So it should be a nice big orangey hit, and El Dorado is going to give you some really lovely tropical elements to it as well. But um, yeah, very curious to see how this beer turned out like I said we got this one as part of the Tevele sortiment through System Bolaget here in Sweden I think it was at the very very beginning of April that this one was released I can't remember the exact date but uh, yeah I've had this beer sitting for a week or two at the time of review so um, yeah it still should be pretty fresh actually we do get the Danish things over here pretty fresh actually which is great but uh, yeah very much looking forward to trying this one I've had some really good beers from Ale Farm before and the two other IPAs that I've reviewed from them recently were also very nice so fingers crossed this one carries on in the same vein and I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this beer as well so um yeah let's see how we got on then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Ale Farm Brewing before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the danish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to because i live very close to denmark and i love the danish beers and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about ale farm brewing then on to my brewery notes so Ale Farm, as I've told you before, is the brainchild of Andreas Skate Larsen and Casper Tiedemann, and the company was founded back in 2015. So Andreas had been a home brewer for a while, but he had worked for a period of time as a librarian too, whereas Casper, on the other hand, has a very extensive background in the IT sector, and he's involved in several different companies and organisations, one of which is actually his own consultancy firm. But originally they based the company on a farm out to the north of Copenhagen, hence the name Ale Farm for the brewery, um, but they moved the business down to Co which is to the southwest of the city not long after that and for a long time they were brewing just with a very small 200 liter brew kit and this was intended as a sort of pilot transition brew kit they sold their beers mainly in um you know, a little 375 milliliter cork top bottles at the time, actually, which was interesting. The very first review I did from Ale Farm was actually uh, one of those beers, and they were known for their sour beers in the early days as well. Uh, but in 2018, they changed direction. They opened a new 20 hectolitre brewery in Grave, which has a canning line, and their beers have started to export abroad after that too, which is great. But it was at this point when Andreas left the company and went into brewing cider instead. Uh, for a period of time when they moved into this new place, they had Mark Valevsky brewing for them, who used to work for Beavertown, but he's now back in London brewing with Mikeller London, which is kind of interesting. I do need to go and check that place out, actually. Um, but today, Ale Farm is run on a daily basis by Casper and his wife Brit so it's kind of a family run company now which is pretty cool uh, but they've been very prolific as of April 2021 when I'm pr producing this review for you these guys have produced in the region of 300 different kinds of beer like I say there's a lot of New England IPAs come out from these guys I've had one or two West Coasters as well but they do porters and stouts and things like this as well actually but uh, yeah a very prolific brewery always experimented with different things 
And like I say, they do some pretty interesting beers. A little bit difficult to find in Copenhagen, though. I'm not sure exactly where I would find the ale farm things in uh, in central Copenhagen. I've not seen them in the likes of um, Shiosk and, uh, and things like this, actually. So I need to figure out where I can get a hold of these things when I go over the water. Uh, the next time but um yeah that's all i can really tell you about ale farm for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um yeah let's get on and have a little look at this beer itself then that is it for your history section so as you can see lovely artwork as we always get from ale farm brewery you can see there is the ale farm symbol just on the back of the can there. I'm just trying to, it's a bit hard to line it up actually, but there you go. You can see like a barn, like the side of a barn there. But yeah, um, 6% New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. It's got barley, wheat and oat malts in it. And then it's hopped with Mosaic, Eldorado and Amarillo. So yeah, all American hops in this one. And Mosaic's about 14% alpha acid, lovely juicy tangerine you notes. Know, Eldorado I think is about 12% alpha acid. It's not a million miles away from Simcoe, but it's got a little bit more kind of complexity to it. Lots of mango in there as well. So kind of the soft apricot you note know, that you always get from Citra. And then we've got Amarillo in here, which is a big um, oily, but quite zesty orange in fact. But um, yeah, very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. Um, 440 milliliter can, I think I paid about 50 uh, Swedish kroners for this. So uh, yeah, that's about five euros, about four pounds 50 sterling and maybe about $5.75 American for those of you watching in different places, just so you have a wee bit of a price comparison. As I've told you before, when it comes to the imported beers here in Sweden, you always pay about 10 kroners more for them, just because um, you know, you've got to give the import company uh, a little slice of the the cake if you like but um yeah let's see how we get on with this one then let's crack it open and get on with the the tasting section then a six percent oh this one was a little full actually i could feel that actually it was quite solid in the can i have to say but um yeah let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then it's really nice actually to have the ale farm beers um more readily available again because these beers did disappear for quite a while until my review recently I think it had been about a year or something since I'd last reviewed a Neil Farm beer I think that's about three quarters of it in the the glass just now so that'll do for our look at the appearance and the aroma but yeah as you can see this beer is poured with a three quarter finger of a frothy um, white head I would say that's a perfect white head as well, but it's a little bit bumpy in the middle. I'm not sure how well you're going to see that on the camera, but it is quite a bumpy head that's in this one, I would say. Looks pretty cool. But yeah, in terms of its colour, this is a lovely kind of bright um, bright yellow, like a kind of mango juice colour. I always like comparing the New England IPAs to, uh, to different fruit juices, because that's what their appearance really does just remind me of. So this one's like a very bright uh, mango juice this one in my opinion but yeah one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there but overall it looks pretty nice and in terms of the level of haze in this beer i would say that it's actually got a little bit more of a kind of natural haze vibe to it it's certainly not one of the hazier new england ipas i've come across in uh, recent times so remember the color of these beers is dependent on one the type of malts that you use two the length of your wort boil the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize less you get a darker color of beer but it depends on the type of malt that you use in the first place and then uh, the level of haze in these beers depends on your oat and wheat content and to some extent the yeast as well actually. So it can vary from brewery to brewery. Theoretically speaking, as you go up the alcohol scale, you should get more haze, but you know that's not always the case. It's all about the ratios and things. But um, yeah, in terms of a New England IPA, nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. So let's move on to the aroma and have a little look at that then. Curious to see what this one has in store for us. Smells quite nice. Um, it's quite typical though of what we've had from Ale Farm in the past, actually. So um, it's it's nice. Um, so yeah, straight away with this one. As I've told you, with New England IPAs before, you can get more yeasty ones. You can get more kind of rye and grainy ones, wheaty and bitey, oaty, creamy. Um, what have we not said? Uh, barley malt leaning and bready, and we can also get a little bit of a kind of brown sugary thing out of these beers as well. So. These kind of things um, coming out of this beer, um, uh, and usually you get different elements 
to these two, but you get a little bit of everything with the old farm actually. So for me, first impression of this one is it does have a wee bit of a farmy house element to it. It's got a little bit of a kind of soft bready um, kind of element in there as well. And you do get a little bit of wheaty bitiness too and some smooth oatiness. So um, yeah, there is a wee bit of everything coming out of the malty side of things then. So the backbone of the beer is definitely a sort of, um, it's definitely a kind of slightly woody, kind of cream cracker sort of thing. You do get a little bit of that out of this beer in the background. Um, um, on top of that, you can start to get some nice kind of fresh white bready elements to it, which is great. And you can definitely smell in the middle uh, of the nose as well. There's some nice smooth oaty qualities. There's a little touch of a kind of Werther's original sort of butter candy element to it. So the middle of the, pa the middle of the nose in this one, not the palate, we're not tasting it yet. The middle of the nose in this beer, the malty side of things comes across as very, very layered. But when you take the aroma in a little bit more deeply, you know, you really get a little bit of the bitiness of the wheat at the back of the nose there, which is, um, which is very, very interesting. So, um, yeah, I really like how, um, I really like how this side of things goes together, actually. It's a big thumbs up from me in, um, in that regard. So, um, yeah, the malty side of things, I think, comes across really nicely. I'm curious to see how all of that translates into the flavour, but it's got that kind of slight crispness and slight, you know, that very slight farmhousey and breadiness to it. The, the ale farm beers, in my experience, have always been quite well balanced in the malty side of things, and I definitely get that vibe from the aroma in this one. So that's a plus point for this beer, absolutely. Um, but yeah, on the uh, hoppy side of things then, there's a good little bit of um, there's a good little bit of earthiness to this one, which I think is um, which is interesting. You get a little bit of earthiness out of mosaic as well, which you know mosaic just gives you that bit of depth. So I do get a wee touch of earthiness out of this one, which I think comes across really nicely. It just adds a wee bit more depth to the beer, and it kind of links up well with the very the slight sort of yeasty farmhousey kind of thing that this beer has. But um, yeah, there's a lot of green component to this one. This one's got a nice big floral aromatic note. All of these hops of course are big American ones. You're getting a lot of alpha acid out of these of course um, but yeah you've got a lovely big bitterness um, a lovely big kind of green floral component to this beer. So for me this one lovely and bright but still quite deep. You get a little bit of spiciness out of it as well which I think is nice um, but you also have um, how do you say there's also a nice kind of lighter grassy element to this one and the grassiness does have a wee bit of zest actually so i think that'll be coming from the amarillo um el dorado i'd love to have a single hop el dorado beer and um, you know it'd be cool if spike brewery for example here in sweden did a huda el dorado or if um you know oh brewing do a, a 100 el dorado that would be quite nice but yeah the grassy notes in this beer does do have a, a good little bit of zestiness to them but this one's got a lovely fruity character some nice big um some nice kind of quite punchy passion fruit out of this one. There's a lovely juicy mango element in there as well. That's the El Dorado that's giving you the tropical side of the beer. There's some juicy tangerines in there too. Maybe a tiny little hint of like pineapple or something, which is interesting. But then you've got that big oily orangey note from the um, from the Amarillo in there. The Amarillo, I think, is the one that's really pushing its way out of this. But you could definitely get the lighter kind of um, tangerine elements from the mosaic as well in this. This beer is showing some really interesting characteristics in, um, in a lot of ways and I can really appreciate how this one goes about its business actually. It's a nice big orangey one and remember if you've watched the channel for any length of time you might have an idea about this. I'm a sucker for orangey leaning um, IPAs and you know Mosaic and El Dorado. Um, I think that was what actually convinced me to get this beer because I very nearly didn't get this one because I'd had two beers from Ale Farm quite recently but then when I saw it was uh, when I saw the hot bill I was like yeah I've got to have that so um, yeah that convinced me when I was in um, the Hansa system but um, yeah it is pretty awesome I have to say so the aroma of this one really works out quite well fingers crossed that translates into the flavour but let's have a taste of this one then this is the saturated a 6% New England hazy IPA from Ale Farm Brewing in Grave to the Southwest of Copenhagen over in Denmark. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull, cheers. Yeah, that's pretty damn solid once again. 
yeah um, I like this for sure the one thing that you get you often get with these brews and you know it's when we try the likes of Stieg Berriots we try um, you know, we try the likes of Stieg Berriots, we try OO Brewing and things like this. These breweries that pump out a lot of New England IPAs. It's always a bit difficult to say, you know, whether one is, um, you know, whether it's a really striking beer or not. But what you'll always get is something very, very solid. And this one, again, is just another very solid example of the New England IPA from Ale Farm. These guys know what they're doing in this style. And it shows with this one. So, um... Yeah, thumbs up to them once again. I like this beer, but you know, I kind of expected it to be honest, so not such a surprise. But yeah, um, with this one, then I would say the beer itself is. Um, in terms of a New England IPA, it's a very smooth one. It's got a nice bit of wetness and juiciness, and almost a little bit of crispness as well, actually, which I can, uh, which I can really appreciate. So um, yeah, the the way that everything goes together in this beer, I think um, the way that everything kind of functions together in this beer, it's one of these beers where everything just slots together. Um, really quite nicely in fact um, but in terms of the New England IPA it actually comes across the one other thing I would observe about this on first impression is that it's actually got a good bit more oatiness to it than the aroma would have you believe the oats are a bit more prominent in this one I think than the aroma uh, leads uh, would lead on but um, yeah let's try and break down the flavour profile of this beer for you then a little bit So, um, yeah, I like this, definitely. This is one that's going to grow on me for sure. But yeah, straight away with this beer then, middle third of your palate, you can feel that nice sort of, uh, you know, Jacob's Cream Cracker. I think the, the Danes maybe say like Seek de Brood. You do get a little bit of that kind of crackery sort of thing forming the backbone of the beer. Um, there's a bit of bread crusty element in there as well, which is really, really nice. And if you go to the front corners of your palate and then just go diagonally back, it's got a nice little slightly woody element in there as well. So yeah, the backbone of the beer is like Sig de Brood, Jacob's Cream Cracker kind of thing, a little bit of wood in there as well. Then on top of that, you get a nice smooth, um, you get a nice smooth um, brown bready, sorry, not brown bready, fresh white bready element sitting on top of that. But you've got a little bit more of a kind of bread crusty element there too but the middle third of your palate is really layered in this one which I, I really like actually but um yeah the the fruit the the kind of the malty side of this beer comes across it's really nice and just smooth but it's quite a bit thicker this beer than i thought it was going to be it really thickens up the more that you drink of it but yeah on top of the bready side of things if you go down the sort of middle line of your tongue you get quite a thick oatiness out of this beer and i think it's a little bit more prominent actually on the front half of that middle third of your tongue but down the middle line of your palate in the middle third of your tongue there is quite a big um oaty character coming out of this beer so um yeah i can appreciate how that goes together definitely i think it's um it's really interesting so um yeah fruit the malty side of this beer is quite interesting in that middle third of your palate but um yeah i think that covers the middle third of things fairly well and um, this one there is a little touch of that kind of werther's original butter candy brown sugar thing in the middle third of your palate due to the um you know due to the um the alcohol flavours and stuff, but it's really not that prominent at all, to be honest with you. The middle third of your palate is a little bit more about the kind of crackery underlying and then the oatiness sitting on top of a wee bit of bread in between. That probably summarises it quite well. But yeah, on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit of a slightly bready build up there. You get a nice kind of slightly grainy bread crusty quality sitting on top of that. Then on the back third of the palate, there is... Um, there is a nice little bit of uh, wheaty bitiness to the beer. So yeah, you do get a little bit of the wheatiness on that back third of the palate there. On top of that back third of the palate though, that's where you get the more kind of airy yeasty esters. So you can feel that the um, 
I don't know if esters is the right word, but yeah, you can feel those more airy, yeasty type flavours sitting on top of it. So the flavour on the back third of the palate is quite tall, like this. And as you gradually move forward from the back of your palate, you can feel it just condenses down a little bit. As you reach that border region before going into the middle third of your palate, it drops down quite sharply. And then in the middle third of the palate, it feels like these flavours, the malty ones I described earlier, are quite condensed and quite you know, compacted into each other. So um, yeah, it's it's nice in that sense. I think having that bit of wheaty bitiness and yeastiness in the back works um, works pretty well in this beer. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's really interesting um, how all of that that pieces together. But yeah, it's a nice malt base in this one. Definitely a little bit more oaty than some of the other ones I've had from Ale Farm in the past. But again, you know, when I think about it, one thing I think you tend to find with New England IPAs, if you have them sitting for a little bit, the oatiness can thicken up a little bit in these beers. So maybe that's what I'm noticing with this one. It maybe just has been sitting for a little while and the oats are starting to kind of cream up and thicken up a little bit. That can happen with New England IPAs. So... So food for thought that one actually food for thought but um yeah let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then but yeah um on the back corners of the palate there's definitely a little touch of earthiness but this one that's going to be your mosaic that's giving you that as you move further forward um you get a nice as you move further forward, you get a nice kind of um, slightly herbal quality there. And as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, as you progressively move forward, you can just feel the floral character just builds and builds a little bit. And then round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little touch uh, kind of more light and uh, and grassy, I would say. So I can really appreciate how that side of things uh, goes together as well. So a nice lighter grassy element to this beer too. So yeah. But um, yeah, the um, fruity side of the, the the fruity side of this beer as well is quite nice. But I think the green component of this one is nice and smooth, but it's got a little bit of that you know American bite to it as well. So the more the further you go into the aftertaste with this one, the floral notes do get feel as if they're a little bit deeper. But you've got a nice lighter kind of grassy element to the to the beer as well. So uh, yeah, it works. Um, it works very very nicely actually. So. Um, yeah, I think it work. It's um, the green component just adds again a little bit of depth to the beer, which I think works really well. But let's focus on that front third of your palate then, and the kind of fruity elements to the beer. So on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, there's a nice little bit of a there's a little bit of a kind of thicker doughy um, yeasty element in there as well. There's a little bit of a bread crusty quality underneath that. You can feel the kind of oats coming out again. So the, the backbone of that front third of your palate is a slightly thicker smooth oaty element to it so um yeah i think that works uh i think that does work quite well as well but um yeah it's um that the beer that really helps bring out some of the orangey and slightly more tropical flavors of the beer actually i think it actually favors the tropical side of things a little bit more the, the kind of bready backbone and oaty backbone that the beer has so yeah, let's focus on that front third of your, that, that fruity side of the beer then. So at the back of that front third of your tongue, that's when you get the more tropical elements. So that's the El Dorado that's giving you that, definitely. So yeah, that, um, that front third of your palate, definitely some nice, uh, there's a wee touch of a kind of passion fruity note there, but as you move further forward from it, you get definitely get more of a mango element out of it and one or two little apricot-y kind of undertones as well. But as you reach the front half of that, um, as you reach the front half of that uh, front third of your tongue, it's all about the, the mosaic and the, the amarillo in this one. So forming the base of that, you can feel that nice, big, more oily orange from the... Um, from the amarillo, but on top of that, you get a nice lighter kind of um, tangerine element coming out of it, which I think works, uh, which I think can work very, very well. So yeah, that side of things gets a big um, thumbs up for me. I like that big orangey note. So you can really feel as you reach the front tip of the tongue, it's the beer's a little bit more kind of zesty and things like that. And again, that's the Amarillo that's going to give you that. And then you've just got the kind of lighter tangerine notes from the mosaic sitting on top of that. And maybe a little hint of pineapple in there as well, just towards that, the, the back of that, 
uh, you know, just, just towards the kind of tropical side of the beer as well. So yeah, back half of that front third of your tongue is more tropical and El Dorado like, but with a wee bit of the pineapple from Mosaic. And then as you move into the front half of the tongue, uh, in the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's definitely a little bit more, um, it's definitely a little bit more kind of just orangey, it's a big oily orange underneath and then a lighter kind of tropical element to it as well, which I think works really well. So um, yeah, this is a really nice drinkable beer. As I say, I don't think this is one of the most kind of striking ones that you're going to find from Ale Farm, but I think with the Ale Farm beers, there's always that element of, uh, of drinkability to them in, uh, in a sense as well. But um, yeah, it's another solid, sessionable New England IPA, this one. I never session the beers, of course, for me. I always treat them as individual tasters. That's what I like doing with beer. But um, yeah, I think this one um, works really nicely. And it's one of the ones from Ale Farm where everything just slots together very, very nicely. But that seems to be a kind of recurring theme I find with this brewery. So yeah, thumbs up to them once again for this. I like this because it's, it's well balanced between the tropical side of things and the more orangey, zesty side, uh, side, of, the, side of it as well. And, I like those big orangey zesty things. But yeah, let's round off the tasting section with the mouthfeel then. So I would say that overall, this is this beer is right in the middle of the spectrum. It's mid-bodied, no doubt about that. Carbonation is really, um, has a nice, it has a little bit of a kind of tingle to it, which I really like. So you've got a nice little bit of carbonation and a nice little bit of tingle in there. Um, so um, yeah, it's um, there's a wee bit of that to it, but yeah, it's, it's really quite a smooth and it does have a little bit of a slick side to it as well, this beer, but I think this one really kind of thickens up a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste with it. So this is a beer that develops a good little bit of thickness, I would say. But on the, um, the bitterness side of things, I think this is a fairly standard, you know, 30 IBU. New England IPA. The malt base is nice and smooth. It develops a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of thickness. Um, so yeah, the fruity side of the beer too. Bit juicy, a little bit oily. I think it works uh, really quite well. So it gets a big, um, it gets a big thumbs up from me in that sense as well. So um, yeah, it's got everything you would want. It's quite a, to be honest, it's quite a typical beer. It's what I would expect of Ale Farm. You get quite a few of their kind of trademark things out of this one. Um, so yeah, if you like an orangey leaning uh, New England IPA, this one's going to be right up your street. It's got a nice hot blend in it. You can't really ask for much more from a New England IPA these days. There's so many out there, it's difficult to choose. But you know, Ale Farm have another um, another solid offering with this one. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this. This one was the saturated, a six percent New England hazy IPA with Mosaic, El Dorado and Amarillo in it from Ale Farm Brewing in Grave to the southwest of Copenhagen. I think that's a nice way to round off this review. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Ale Farm Brewing. We will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. I'm sure I do actually have one more beer from them in the April a local smoke collect so you'll probably see that within the next kind of two weeks or something like that but um yeah this one was pretty interesting i'm glad i picked this one up because the hot blend turned out to be really nice but yeah thank you again for watching check out my social media let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from ale farm beer and i'll catch you guys in the next one a few more danish reviews coming up and do remember to keep me up to date with any new danish breweries that i should be checking out slanja skull cheers make sure you check out ale farm brewing from grave on sealand in denmark Let's go.